Kind of as an introduction to myself, um, my name is Trevor Hunsaker. I am a web developer. My day job, I work in the IT department of a software company. Um, and uh, like I was like I was saying, I got sort of interested in in doing some self-publishing because I would I uh, wanted to write kind of a really comprehensive book about how to get into being you know doing web development if you don't know anything about you know, web development. You know, if, you, if you're a computer user, if you're, you're comfortable with Microsoft Word, if you're comfortable, you know, with writing, you know, online generally, you know, blogging or whatever, then I figured, um, you know, it could kind of get you started. Uh, you know, if, I figure most people any, in nowadays are kind of in that path. But so that's, that's kind of the, the impetus for me, kind of figuring some, uh, some of this stuff out. What we're going to talk about mostly is, um, you know, how to generate an a, a, an ebook file. So we're talking, you know, a finished PDF or uh, Mobi or EPUB that you could eventually end up, you know, uploading to Amazon or the Google Play Store or the Apple iTunes um, iBooks store. And uh, so, and then uh, then we'll talk a little bit about um, marketing uh, because you know if you build it, they won't necessarily come. Uh, so uh, the, we were talking. I was talking with Melissa earlier. Oh, let, I, we, we're small enough group. Can I get you guys' names? Hi, uh, Wendy. And Wendy and Joe. Jerome. Jerome. Sorry. Oh, what's your name? Sorry, You're fine. We got started late because they wanted to record. Amy, how, how you doing? Amy oh, Amy, Joe. I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, the, a lot of a lot of times people. Uh, have this idea in their head that you know once I publish this book, then you know once once I've got this book written, then we'll go to the publishers, or, or I'll be able to you know put it online and we'll make millions and millions of dollars. But the reality is that most people actually um, don't write the book, right? Like they'll sit down and or they'll get partway through. So that's the the first thing, uh, and and is to just sit down and make some time. One of the one of the um, biggest problems people have is just sitting down and making time and kind of doing it consistently. And I found that um, there was a, have you guys ever heard of, uh, Jerry Seinfeld had this, uh, there was an article on like Lifehacker a while back about his method for, you know, constantly improving and getting better. And it was called Don't Break the Chain. Is it, does that sound familiar? Have you guys ever heard of it? Heard of that? Basically, basically he would, he would, he would, um, uh, he got a, a big wall calendar, you know, big wall, year calendar, and every time, every day that he he took to sit down and actually write, you know, write jokes, because that's what comedians are essentially, as are writers. So every time, every day he he sat down and actually wrote, he would just draw an X on the on the calendar on the day that he that he did it, and then um, it was just a matter of after a while you get a string of those, and there's kind of a psychological. Um, pressure after you've got a, a bunch of those to keep it going, right? And so he would, you know, even if he was tired, if he needed, even he'd be traveling, he'd, you know, get into the hotel and just maybe even spend five minutes, but just spend, you know, X amount of time every day doing some writing and eventually you'll get done. It's, it may not happen in the kind of speed that you're going to, that you kind of hope it does, but you, you just, you know, if you don't sit down and do it every day, you probably won't do it. And uh, that's, I found that's true for me. Um, there was a, a site that I found almost need to scooch this over. This uh, don'tbreakthechain.com, you can, you can create an account and then basically do the same thing. Like you can mark, oh yeah, you can set up different chains um, for, for different things. So let's see, I think I may even have, actually have an account here. I can remember my password. Oh yeah, so I've got a writing one. I've, I had an exercise one. I have a coding, you know, like doing some personal coding one. I ha haven't been doing this in, in quite a while. I've been pretty slacking. We've had a, uh, my wife had a baby a little bit ago and I, my sleep schedule has been sort of disrupted. But I mean, the point, the point is to hopefully kind of get back to doing this where you kind of, uh, you know, you mark, you know, and then you just, you just keep the string going. Uh, so, um, <coughs> And when you're when you're writing a book, a lot of the times you get tempted, and and you can get really distracted by doing things that feel like they're actually doing work. Like there's, um, you open up Microsoft Word and you start playing around with the headers, you know, with, with the header styles and the font colors and the font sizes, and um, that feels like working on your book. But say, so, Amy Joe, yeah, 
So um, one of the best ways one of the best ways to avoid that kind of a temptation is to to not worry about it at all. And so um, a lot of and a lot of people and um, a lot of people will end up writing um, in a plain text format. So you open up Notepad or you know something that you cannot do any formatting in, and then you then you write in a. Oh yeah, and and the reason you're doing this is because you know you know doing all of that all that stuff just isn't writing, right? You're you're setting font. It, it just, it's just not getting your book done. And, and you can still do all of that pretty easily uh, if, you, yeah, if you write in a plain text format, uh, especially we're going we're gonna to talk about using Markdown. Um, but you can still do all of that really easily um, once you've got it written, if you've, if you've used a, you know, a, a, a decent markup format. And so there are a couple of, couple of editors. Adobe Brackets is a, is a new editor that they've, they've released a little bit ago. It's, it's geared towards writing code, um, but uh, it's free. It's, I, like, I like the kind of dark theme that it, you know, the, the themes and the, that it comes by default. It's, it's I think, have any, any of you guys, are any of you people coders? Any, any of you guys write code? Um, I, I, it's got a feeling um, similar to Sublime Text if you've used Sublime, um, but it's uh, totally free and open source, so it's something you can use. Notepad plus plus also really good. I'm not sure, um, you know, what the what the OS 10 um, versions would be, I, but I'm pretty sure Adobe Brackets is actually. I think I'm pretty sure that they've got a, you know, an OS 10 One thing I've installer. Is, it seems like since I'm on a Mac. Yeah. Put out the whole, a Windows desktop at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I try to find cross platform yep. ones, and I have noticed that not all the text, the simple, you would expect the simple text <coughs> in software to be work on all of them, but they don't all open and look. They, they, they just, they're not. They're so, not so brackets is designed, to, as far as I know, to be cross platform. I've got it running on Windows, they have um, Debian. Installer, so it should be. I think you should be able to install like on Ubuntu, or uh, they don't have RPM. So, so like the the Red Hat and the Fedora side of side of things, I think you'd have to do some kind of conversion to get going. But um, so then it's, you're still going to have the issues with things like in the line markers and stuff are consistent between the platforms. And you generally those that's usually an op <laughs> a lot of the times if I've opened open a file with different end of line markings, they'll get prompted. I was just surprised. So I just some, wanted to yeah. Sure. And once, and once you get one that doesn't and you get a, you get a mix, well, then some of the other ones will say, well, I can't really, really choke on it. And they don't match, and so they say, well, you know, you're, you're, you've, you've done something funny here. Yeah, I have, I have, I, I typically um, oscillate between a Windows and a Fedora machine and haven't run into that issue, but, I, you know, it's definitely, definitely something to watch out for. So if you can convince your text editor to also show what your white space characters are so that you can kind of, you know, know what it's, what it's using there, then you can... Um, hopefully avoid that. Um, so, but instead of writing in a, a word processor, um, the idea is that you, you write a plain text in uh, a text editor, and the format that you, you we use a markup format. HTML is a markup format. We're not going to write. You probably don't want to write your book in HTML unless you're a web programmer like me. Um, but Markdown is really handy, and for a couple of reasons, Markdown is a format that. Um, Will will mark up uh, it, it. When you look at it, it does. It's not filled with, with with so many you know foreign symbols. If you're not used to writing code, then you know there's not a not all of not all you know. If you're not used to writing code, then you can get pretty you know off put by all the semicolons and curly braces and you know all those things. And uh, this you know mark markdown doesn't have any of that. It's pretty easy to read just as a you know just as a layperson and kind of get an idea of exactly what what the text kind of should be you know after it's been processed. If you're going to be writing um, Really, technical documents where uh, you're going to be laying out mathematical formulas. Then LaTeX is um, obviously really that's what it was designed to do. So if you're laying out complex mathematical formulas, I don't have any really experience, and I've never um, dealt with LaTeX. So um, you know, it's I guess it's got a fairly steep learning curve. So it's not one of those things you'll probably jump right into and pick up. But Markdown, on the other hand, is super super simple, and it's designed um, really to kind of just pick up and run with. Um, and the reason why we want to use Markdown in the self-publishing world is because there are uh, converters that will take your set of Markdown files and, and spit out all the other formats that you're going to want to you know, 
end up having your book in, whether it's going to be an HTML, uh, you know, a group of HTML files, and you can just you're going to just put the book just as you know a website online. Um, then EPUB or Mobi for or, uh, for the popular um, book marketplaces like Amazon and, and Google and iTunes. And then if you if you uh, need to actually create a Word document, so, so if you're going to collaborate with somebody that's going to help you you know edit on down the road, and they're not interested in looking at your markup, you can generate a Word file, send it to them, and then they can make their edits, and then you can you know in incorporate those back in your. It's 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 a uh, it's a I so saw I will show you here in a second. Markdown is a, a just a way of it's it's just text. All it is, it's just you you it's it's the way you write text in your browser. So, are you familiar at all with like HTML or have you done code? So it's it's just another way of of of, of putting text in an editor, and instead of you know angle brackets, you're going to use you know pretty simple symbols to kind of denote what a you know what is a heading and what is a what is italic. So like, for example. Um, you know, in, your, in Markdown, your headings are just denoted by you know your uh, pound, pound symbol, and you know your 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 most important heading is going to have one that can, kind of will end up correlating if you're converting the HTML to an H1 tag, um, all the way and it'll go all the way out to six, right? So if you can do six, then it'll. So the benefit to learning how to uh, add style in the tool is that you can create it can convert to any of those other. Right. Things. Exactly, and so a lot of the and a lot of the platforms we'll talk about that a lot of the tools that we will see for converting into the ebook formats except Markdown. Almost every, I'm everybody except Markdown is an input format, and that's that's one of the other benefits. They'll, a lot of them will accept other ones, but Markdown just seems so universal that it was totally worth talking about. Um, so um, these are sort of the, some of the things that you you might be want to want to try doing if you want to. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I guess what fancy stuff are you hoping? What do you? Well, I don't know. To, if it, when you want to get it ready to publish or to send out, like have a, a bigger title and. and uh, so um, the way you do that, um, the way you'll end up doing that is if if you, you want to actually, um, you know, control fonts and, and and that kind of thing, is you'll probably the the ebook formats are generally they're basically web like a zipped up web. Um, Page, just a bunch of web files, and you'll probably want to collaborate with somebody that can, has a little bit of web design experience, and they'll generate a style sheet in CSS that will be, then, you know, be applied. You know, it, the style sheet will tell you your heading is, you know, 30 points, and it's bold, and it's this font. Um, it'll tell you, you know, the, any anything that I mark in italic. You know, instead of being italic, we could do red. You know, because you know CSS is pretty open-ended that way. You can, you don't have to make, you know, use the element. To, to make it italic, you know, the, it, you, you don't have to use the italic element to make an element italic. You can tell it to do other things with it. Um, and CSS is kind of the language that you used to do that. But you'll probably end up wanting to um, find, you know, a friend or a neighbor or, or uh, you know, there, there um, places online that we'll talk about that you can find help for doing that stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, so to, to, to make text italic, you just put, you know, the underscores around it. To make it bold, you just put two, the, the two asterisks. Um, to create a link, um, you know, you just put the link text in the square brackets in the URL right next to it in parentheses. Um, if you're going to insert an image, um, oh, and uh, there's some there's some syntax I think that I missed here. Uh, kind of an image is similar to a link where um, where you, where you, uh, a lot of times uh, on th this is mostly for web pages. There uh, the client isn't able to you know render a the image, maybe the, the user is blind and they're using a screen reader or whatever, and so you, you create um, a little bit of alternative text, and, and for an image, you do the same thing. So you put your alternative text in the square brackets in front of the parentheses here, but the whole thing is preceded by the exclamation mark. And then you just put the path um, to your image you know, relative to where your markdown file is. This, this, this is a relative path. Um, and then there's list items. So let's, I was actually going to, let's, there's a website you can kind of, this monitor's opposite where my mouse wants to be. This um, stackedit.io is kind of a, is a great place to kind of play around with 
um, with Markdown so you can kind of see what's going on like the uh, I lost my mouse the other the other way you, that you can create headings is to put to, to put them you know underscore uh, Yeah, so this is so so on the on the, on this side, this is this is marked down right here, and then the, this is actually kind of just showing you how it'd render out. And I just I just brought this side as kind of an example of uh, just so you could kind of see it live. Um, so I wouldn't if I if it was me, I wouldn't edit necessarily. You know, I wouldn't. I guess you probably could. And if, I I just found this site a couple of days ago, but it looks like you can create accounts and save you know save documents here, so you can kind of see how it'll end up rendering. Yeah, but. Right, and then and then um, this kind of shows you how it's. Well, the problem is, is it doesn't know what's a heading and what's you know what's going to be a list. So that's the whole problem. That's the whole point of a markup format. Is basically you're saying this is a heading, right, or this is a link, and this is you know this is a you know this is a list item, and it'll generate the list for you. Well, yeah, the, the, the and yeah, so the reason we would, we'd use the yeah markup format, like I said, is just so you don't spend you spend your time you know futzing around with you know setting header styles and, and that sort of thing because you're going to do that later on. Once the book is written, you can you can you know take a couple of days and actually you know design it. But it it seems like people get so stuck on the, you know, designing it first that they just never, you know, and then they go around and they decide, you know, partway through they decide they want to play with the, the header and they're only 30% of the way done. They just, it's just one of those roadblocks that people seem to run into pretty often. So anyway, Stack Edit is kind of, if, if you're interested in kind of learning, and then there was another website called, uh, I think it was just markdowntutorial.com. Uh, So yeah, it'll it's it's kind of more of an interactive tutorial. So it kind of it, it it explains to you. I don't know. It seems like it's pretty hard to read, but it says tells you okay, this is how to make bold and italic text. And then down in the, it it gives you an exercise. And then once you've completed it, it moves on to the next lesson. So that's kind of if you're you know, you know if you, just as a way to kind of get get going on Markdown. These monitors backwards and it's throwing me off. Uh, Docverter.com. Uh, so once we once you've written the book, okay, we've gotten uh, typically what you'll end up doing is uh, most people I think find it pretty comfortable to split their book in a you know each each chapter is just going to be in its own file, and then you, so you're going to have this whole file, you know, a folder full of markdown files. You may have like inside that folder a, you know another one with images in it, so that if you're you know including images in your doc, in your book. Um, and you, then and now we're at the point where we want to turn this into a book. And Docverter is really cool. Um, they've got an API that allows you to kind of upload that that whole that whole uh, that whole bundle. You know, all your all your, all your files, all your images, um, style sheet. You know, for you know, once you've got the book designed, you know, the style sheet for you know saying, okay, my my H1s instead of you know being 30 points, why you know I want to make them 25 points and use you know Helvetica instead of Arial or whatever. Once you've got all of that done, Dogverter will take all of that and spit out just about any format you could imagine. Um, it'll it'll create EPUB, it'll create Mobi, it'll create PDF, it'll create HTML. Um, I think the list uh, the list was five times longer than that of all the all the other different file formats that it would create. It would create the word you know the word file. Uh, it's a little tricky to use in that it requires you to kind of uh, understand how an HTTP API works, and they've got some examples. Um, their example uses curl. You guys, any, anybody, everybody here familiar with curl? Mm -hmm. So uh, curl is a command line tool that's found on on Linux Linux systems and OS. You know, OS 10 will have it, but it's it's. Uh, the, oh yeah, sorry. First of all, first of all, you're going to send your requests. This is the URL that you're going to send your HTTP requests to, and um, there's there's a there's a you can install it on you can install actually Docverter. They've got a um, source on GitHub where you can 
copy all of their source code and then just run it on your own machine. Um, it has a whole list of dependencies that make that sort of tricky. And it seemed like uh, it was much easier just to have an upload. And it, what, what, what would be really helpful is if they would build this all in just to a web-based form. They don't have anything that's really simple to use. Um, and they have a, it looks like they have a, the hosted solution coming where uh, I suspect that they may end up building a web form around and then you can, you know, for X dollars a month, you'll be able to, you know, make, generate, you know, you know y, y numbers of books or whatever. But they haven't, they haven't finished that. So for now, it's free. And, you know, you send, you send a certain number of requests. So, so while you're working on this, kind of be, be um, what's the word? Just don't take advantage of their bandwidth and their, you know, the, you don't, don't, we don't want to just hammer their servers to death because the last thing we'd want to do is for them to disappear. Um, but and they have an example curl script. Um, uh, so yeah, I you you can use Bash to 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 do this. They've got the documentation for all of the different um, API options, and th this is where you can. This is this is if if uh, this is the sample that I'm going to be working with for the rest of the presentation. So uh, this is. This is the command that, that they have on their, on their website. So what you down, you, what, when you download that zip file, it includes all of these. It includes, it includes these you know, two chapters, this metadata XML file, which is used um, in the EPUB to kind of do, you know, tell it who's the author, when, you know, what the copyright and it is. Comes off for yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is an example from their documentation. So you, so you do the writing in Markdown. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, you you specify your you know you, which format you're coming from and which format you're going to. Uh, you specify the input files option is the list of all of the text that you want it to process. Then you put it in the order that you want it to to put them in. So um, you you just want to make sure that your chapters are in order. Do this online through as well as on your own? So so yeah. So the, if if you go to the if you go to the if you post to this to the this endpoint the c.docverter.com endpoint uh -huh. it will do the conversion for you okay. or you can download their source from github um, and run it on your own computer if you want to set it up as a server on your own machine and then make posts just directly to that you can do it it's just um, the dependencies there were just a whole pile of dependencies which made it a bit more tricky to do so it was just seemed much easier just to just to send it all up to there their API. Well, I think sort of the less technical, yeah. that's what I'm trying to clarify. Sure. So, so this, a lot of this, uh, the, the, for, the, for the light tech, which is somewhat more complex, yeah. there are a lot of tools that, that just install on like Linux and stuff that, that do the conversion. Yeah. I mean, you, you kind of set up for LaTeX? Yeah. But there isn't something like that in the... I didn't, I didn't find any. I didn't find any that you would just install on your machine and then that would it would output, which doesn't mean that they don't exist. I just, you know, that I, and I suspect that somebody could probably make a killing if you wanted to write one, right? Like if you wanted to, if you wanted to find somebody that could that could build that, where you know you write your you write it in Markdown and almost like a almost like Word, except that um, you, you you could get rid of a lot of the options and. Um, make sure that you save the, you know, the designing the book for the, you know, the last stage, and then it just spits it out. I, I, I seem like that seemed like after I, after I went, kind of went through learning this, it felt like, well, here's an opportunity, you know, to make a little bit of money if you know how to write software. Um, other files. So um, this document, any, any images, um, any images that are gonna, you're gonna upload the style sheet. The XML is obvious as for, you know. Author information, kind of copyright information. Um, I can't remember what else. And then these EPUB, these ones that are these ones are you know specifically if you're generating an EPUB, you know this was their example, you know for creating an EPUB, you know the metadata, the file to use for metadata is this one that we uploaded here. The the image that we want for to be our cover image is the one that we uploaded here, and the style sheet that you know we want you to use to format this book is the one we uploaded. And then you know. Uh, I, I wrote a Python script. Um, I had to, uh, any, any of you guys Python, any, any, anybody Python people? I prefer it. It's, it's a really uh, friendly scripting language. Um, 
it's it's how I got into programming. It was kind of my my gateway drug, uh, and it's really um, readable. It's, it doesn't include a lot of the the symbols that a lot of people get you know kind of put off by when they're first coming at programming. But anyway, there's a there's a Python library called Requests uh, on GitHub, and I had to make a small edit to that in order to 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 get my script to to run. And if you let's see, we can actually see that. That script right here. Um, is that readable? That's probably not readable, is it? So you specify um, the API, specify the the files. I oh I I uh, was having some trouble, so I ended up creating this other just WAF file. Um, then the, 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 these are the other options that you specify, and then here's the, here's where you make the request, and and you know tells the API endpoint we you know specified as the URL up here, and so it says we're gonna we're gonna you know post this data up here, and then down at the bottom it there's just some housekeeping, so um, you can kind of see which files it's uploading, and then it asks you what the name of the title is, and then it'll spit spit out. Uh, Yeah, so that'll 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 do the same thing that that curl request is. It was just an alternative way to do it. If you like Python over over Bash, um, you can you can go download you can download those um, those files from those addresses. So I'll, we'll 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 run that example right here. So um, this is this is here's where, here's where my files are. In fact, let's we can. Edit this to include chapter one. Or chapter. Change that to two. Oh. oh, no, it's not. Okay, I'll save that and then. So this is gonna this is gonna run my you know our, our Python script here. Um, it's gonna upload the files. If you don't have any bugs and. Then it'll run. So it's in, and then, then then my script just prompts me for you know what the title is. I just say well, you know we'll call this you know sample run, and then that creates the the sample run EPUB file right in in your uh, output directory. And then that file you can go ahead and you'll be able to that's that's your you know. Uh, for if you've got a, a you know software that'll that'll read EPUB, or if you've got a you know your device that'll read EPUB, then that's your that's your ebook file right there. Uh, and if you want to you know, and so the the beauty of this is if you want to change the format, you know that you're going to spit out, you would just go down here, you change this to Mobi, include the other Mobi specific options that Docverter cares about, um, and then run the script again, and it'll generate your um, Mobi file, and then that's the file you can you know upload to Amazon or whatever. Um, so then you just uh, click on that, and it will it'll bring up the directory for the file, or or it will set it up. Click on. Are you are you talking about this? Yeah. Um, so yeah. So this was just yeah. This is the example script. If you want it, you if you want it the. The, to 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 modify it and run it yourself, it, you know, it, the prerequisite is that you know you've got Python on your system. Obviously, this takes a little bit of Python understanding, so it's not 
the most user friendly thing. I think the next the next step would be for someone to build like a web interface so that you could just specify here are my files and you know here are my chapter files, here are my images, but Docverter hasn't done that. Um, and I haven't seen anybody else that's done that before. Um, so um, their, you know, their, their curl implementation was kind of the one that I was a little put off by, and I'm more comfortable with Python, so I always just preferred to write this pi as a Python script. But if you're, if, if you're comfortable writing, you know, writing scripts um, in other languages, you know, just as long as it can make an HTTP request to that um, docverter URL, Yes. Like yeah, so you're still making an HTTP request just to your local local machine. Yeah. Well, so yeah, so uh, I mean, you could install it on your local machine or you can install it on a server somewhere and then just you know, do the same, just do it over over the internet if you wanted to and then make it if you wanted to, I, I guess you could probably do the do the next best thing where you're like you could set up you know, you could install doc, you know, install it on a, on a server. I don't know. I don't know what the license is, so I don't know if they allow for you to for to do that commercially. Um, I suspect that you probably could, and then you could build the web page, I suppose. Um, so now, now that we've got an ebook file. Uh, oh, and so uh, this, this is just the the link. Um, to uh, to GitHub where you can get that script that I wrote if you're interested, and then that's where the 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 forked version of the Python requests module. Py Python requests is a you know is a third party library this guy wrote to make dealing with HTTP requests easier because um, the default way of doing it in Python is kind of obnoxious. But I just had to change it a hair just so that I could get um, multiple files uploaded. Um, you've got a you what's that? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, that just has the. There, yeah, they're already up there. Oh, the slide. You mean the slides will be posted? Oh, I have no idea if they plan on doing it. I can. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Um, I haven't I haven't done that, but I'll I will definitely make sure to do that once I you know this weekend I'll get those uploaded and so you know uh, hopefully by Monday morning they should be up uh, just where in that in the description I can I can put that in there I I I didn't realize I hadn't gotten that fast hadn't gotten that far yet but yeah we'll, I'll definitely make sure the slides are up and uh, my email address is here uh, at the end if you guys are interested I can make you guys you know more, more than welcome to email me. Everybody, did everybody get those that, that wanted them? Um, so a lot of times you're, you're writing a book, you, having, once you've gotten it written, and that is an accomplishment, right? Like the, actually sit down and actually build an entire book is, is, is an accomplishment. But um, there, there is, I don't think there's anybody that can write a book that, that, won't, that could not use some copy editing. Um, uh, not all of us are artists, and so doing um, designing a cover is probably not going to be you know in our wheelhouse necessarily. Um, if you need specific illustrations done, maybe you want to you know build illustrations. You're doing uh, uh, is it Melissa? Yeah. So you have like graphics and stuff that you're including. Are you building those yourself? So um, you know, there's a lot of people. You know, a lot of times when need technical illustration done, maybe that's past what they're done. Anyway, Fiverr.com is this really cool website where you can go online and people have posted uh, what they are willing to do for five dollars, right? And so, uh, and this isn't necessarily going to be the best. You know, for five dollars, you're not going to get someone who will be able to copy edit your entire book. But what you'll be, what you'll probably be able to do is they'll, they'll say for five dollars, I will. Uh, copy at, copy edit you know two thousand words for you or five thousand words or one chapter of a book you know people have kind of said I will I will for five five dollars do this and I think what they're hoping is that you and they will strike up a relationship you know kind of further down the road where you know might be a little more beneficial to both parties where they can spend a little more time you pay them a little bit more money but I think it's a great way to try out 
you know, someone. We'll find out whether or not you can, you can, you know, work with them as far as, you know, getting the work done. If you're, because, you know, even Stephen King, right, the guy who writes, I don't know, what, three books a year, he's still got somebody that's doing this for him. Um, that's what the publishers, that's what, when, when you're going the self-publishing route, that's, you know, that, that's the kind of the work that they do for you um, that you don't have to worry about. Um, and you, but you, you just need help. You're there. I, I still get there, there, and there wrong occasionally, right? Like I know how the, I know, I know how to use there, there, and there, right? The T H E Y apostrophe R E versus the other alternatives. I know what the rule is for those, but occasionally just I'm, I'm blown through something and I get it wrong, or you know, just getting those kind of things cleaned up and having having somebody having a secretary, even if even if you don't want to find somebody, you know, on Fiverr, you know, online, have have a friend. Or relative, or someone, you know, go read over your book and say, "Hey, could you just, you know, see if this reads well? If I've made any, you know, obvious grammatical or spelling errors." Um, and the same, uh, the five are, you know, you've, you've got people that are willing to do, you know, book covers. People, they're, they're, uh, it, it goes way beyond books. There are people willing to do, you know, voiceover. If you've got, you know, video, or people who are willing to do motion graphics for 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 all kinds of. I just just about anything you want to do, you could probably find someone on Fiverr who's willing at least to kind of show you for five bucks what you know what what they're sort of capable of. Um, now, once you've got once you've got all that put to, put together, a uh, bunch of different places you probably will want to try to sell your book on, right? Like Amazon's the big one, obviously. They've got the Kindle store, um, Apple's got their iBooks, Google's got the Play Store, you can get Playbooks. And then these, these bottom two are a couple I found that were really kind of unique. Uh, Softcover um, is a company, well, we'll go over these in a second. So Amazon um, has got the Kindle Direct Publishing option. And so this is the, the kdp.amazon.com. If you're going to, that's where you go to sign up. It'll use your regular Amazon credentials. So you just sign into Amazon regularly and then set up a KDP, you know, chunk of your account there, and then it'll ask you a bunch of questions. Um, as far as what what input formats they support, these are these are these are the kinds of files that you're allowed that, to upload, and that they will turn into you know the Kindle format, the Mobi file. Uh, they have said that that you know if you've if you've done some pretty fancy pantsy complex form editing in Word or in PDF that it may not necessarily convert well. That's another reason, I think, to start off with kind of a basic markup format like Markdown, because um, then you can, you can have a little bit, it, it's just, you don't spend so much time, hopefully, uh, working on conversion errors between your original format and the ebook e format. Um, the way Amazon works, they have kind of a really interesting pricing structure that's, um, I think trying to lead you towards the path of selling your book for between three and ten dollars. Um, if you want to sell it for more than that, if, and if you sell your book for between three and ten dollars, then you get seventy percent of the price. So that's that's they'll pay you seventy percent. They take a thirty percent cut as kind of their you know kind of cover their costs. If you want to sell it for more than ten dollars, then depending on the file size, um, the, they'll they'll let you sell between one, two, or three dollars. Starting at the minimum of one, one, two, or three, and then up to two hundred dollars is the maximum they'll let you list for, and then, then they will take uh, sixty-five percent, and they'll pay you thirty-five percent. Um, so it looks like uh, generally they're really geared towards they, they really want to get people into this bucket. I think they're they're hoping um, that the book prices come down because they're more interested in selling Kindles than they are you know selling eBooks. The, the eBooks are just an excuse to you know get people to buy Kindles. Um, Apple's iBook. Uh, this is this is the same, uh, where you'll go to sign up. Uh, you need an Apple um, ID in order to to publish there. Uh, they only accept the EPUB format, and um, they've got they've got pretty straightforward royalty. So they take a thirty percent percent cut. It's similar to their apps. And you know if you're if, if anybody's you know built a iOS app. Uh, they take 30% and pay you a 70% royalty. Uh, if you're interested in creating multi-touch ebooks or more interactive experience than just you know just a just a you know ebook like a PDF that you're just going to scan through, then they've got a they've got an OS 10 application called iBooks Author that will kind of help you do that, and then it'll generate the format that that 
you know, that their iTunes store will accept. Uh, obviously, it's only an OS X application, so it does require that you have a Mac. Um, and then there, and then once you've got your EPUB, you know, either out of you know Docverter or whatever else, or iBooks Author, then iBooks Producer is another piece of software that you install on your um, Apple machine, and then it's what you use to actually push it into the iTunes store. Uh, Google Play is a bit mysterious. They've they've got this. Um, this here's where you can go kind of learn more about um, you know how the, how the process works, but they don't talk publicly about what they pay published authors, so um, not really sure you know, what kind of a cut you get. People online have been kind of claiming um, that they get around a 50% royalty from Google. Um, so it may not be worth the effort to you. Uh, a lot of people claim, lot, uh, the, these people that are claiming 50% are also saying they get a lot less traffic out of, out of Google than they're getting out of Amazon. Um, Amazon seems to be the place that most people go if they think about ebooks. Uh, the other downside is that you are agree to making the full text of your book cert, uh, available in Google searches, so that if you know a phrase in your book coincides with something that somebody online has searched for, then um, then you know pages of your book will come up in in that search result. There, I think, it seems like they're pretty good, you know, to make sure that you know someone's not going to be able to read your entire book if you if you're offering it. If you're, if you're not offering it for free on their store, it seems like they're pretty good about making sure that you're not able to scroll through as a search user the entire contents and just read it for free in the search index. But it's almost like you're giving yeah, it's it's that's kind of the downside. You know, it's it, it feels like you know the plus side is that you know if people happen to you know search and they find oh yeah here's this book that contains this phrase maybe I want to buy it on the Play Store. So you know it's kind of you know pick you know pick what's more you know more valuable to you there. Sure, and then you you know you, you might buy you know buy ads for those same phrases and then have them directed to you know some website that contains a landing page and that kind of reinforces that I'm yeah or if you if or if you're going to run your own website even right like if you're going to sell it on your own website and take a hundred percent you know or more of the cut and then also Google kind of as an entity is um, hard to get customer service from generally speaking um, people uh, it's it's Right, they just don't have any. Have their their mantra is to automate everything, right? Like everything is all server driven, and so there's not a lot of they don't they don't typically give you know contact information for if you have trouble, please call this number, right? It's just you know if you can find help online, that's great, and if you can't, you might you might be up a up a creek without a paddle. Um, soft cover was a totally different kind of paradigm. Um, it it is actually uh, both software that you run on your computer. Um, it in, it's a Ruby, Ruby gem, which means you have to have um, Ru the Ruby language installed on your machine. Um, and it, it'll process markdown files on your computer and then upload them to softcover.io uh, and then also offer them for sale there. Um, it can generate a bunch of different file formats. It'll generate, you know, um, HTML, PDF, EPUB, um, Mobi. Uh, the it's a, it's only got a command line interface. So uh, it it you know you need to read their documentation, but then you you, you know you type soft cover and then build, and it'll build your ebook. And if you just, you know to give it more options, and it'll build you know your HTML or your PDF or or all of them depending on the options. And then when you hit deploy, it'll actually push it up to softcover.io, where it also acts as a store. Um, so people, you know, people that go to softcover.io can buy your book there, and they only take 10%. Right? They'll pay you 90%, and you're actually able to list list whatever um, price you want. So you're, you know, if you want to list it for more than 200, like at you know Amazon limits you to 200, then you could do that. I don't know why anybody would push publish a book that that expensively. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember what their policy is. Um, I suspect um, that they that you could take the EPUB and the Mobi files and sell them other places as well. Um, and the other, the next, the next um, place that we're going to talk about, and it's the one that I kind of prefer, 
will has explicitly stated you can, and I think these guys will, but I'm, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but one of the other things that they make it easy to do is they, they make it easy to create like a, a website, you know, on the softcover the IO, they've got kind of an interface on, on, the, on their website for creating your own website and then they'll allow you to you know, point you know, trevorhunsaker.com there and then you could sell your book. They, they host it all and do all the infrastructure and then um, they'll just, for 10% for of each sale, they'll, you know, they'll do that for you, which is kind of nice. Oh, and then, go ahead. Probably not. Yeah, I, that's probably true because I don't, you know, until I was researching this, I'd never heard of them. Yeah. Um, so it's not like people are just going to accidentally find your book on softcover. Yeah. Um, the, the, other, the other kind of cool thing that they do, one of the things that is becoming really popular for self-published authors, authors is to create um, different packages with their book, right? So they'll, they'll, the ba they'll, they'll, they'll have a base package, which is just the ebook. And then they might have a, another package that's you know two or three times more expensive, right? They'll charge more money, and it'll include um, maybe it's a, a, a book on you know how to use Photoshop, and then it'll include you know some Photoshop actions or filters or templates, um, you know files files that you, you download as well as the book that you could use to kind of do more things with it, right? And um, Softcover IO makes it easy for you to kind of create those packages um, and. Uh, there's been data actually come back that for, for authors that do that, where they create multiple multimedia packages, they tend to make a much higher percentage, a, a, much, a much larger amount of money. Like, because they'll, they'll sell their ebook for maybe $20, then they'll create these multimedia packages and they'll list them for $80 or $100, and then they'll sell more just of the smaller, you know, the cheaper package, but, be, but the, the bigger chunk of revenue comes in from the more expensive, you know, people you know, spend more money on the bigger package and it's just you know icing on the cake um, so that's actually kind of a really popular uh, method uh, yeah oh crud okay well yeah we better get moving here uh, so this is this is the last last marketplace we'll talk about leanpub.com um, they're th th they have a really cool way of doing this they, they what they will do is they, they require you to have a Dropbox account um, and then they want you to write your book in, in Markdown, although they, I think they do accept like HTML. But then what they will do is they will actually create a shared folder in your Dropbox folder. So if you've got a Dropbox account with, you know, already set up on your machine, then, then a folder will show up in your Dropbox folder from LeanPub, and then you just start writing your book in there. And then they've got a web interface. Once you're done, you go, you go to leanpub.com, and there, there's a button for um, publish, or there's a button for preview, and it, it'll... You know, if you're in a spot where you kind of want to see how your book is looking, you hit the preview button and it will generate the book for you, right? And so you don't have to do the doc verter. You don't have to go through the doc verter thing. And it'll generate the ebook and, um, you know, it'll generate um, a PDF, it'll generate EPUB, it'll generate Mobi. And um, they, they will also offer it for sale there. Go ahead. Okay. Um, was it an hour presentation or, or an hour? Oh no, an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're getting we're we're getting close here. Um, uh, so the, as opposed, this is this if 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 the whole doc verter thing put you off, I would I would recommend going with LeanPub. It's totally free to sign up. They don't they don't charge you anything to sign up. If you make a sale, they take ten percent plus fifty cents on any sale. So you know whatever price you list, they'll take ten percent and then add like another fifty percent or sorry fifty cent charge. Um, to the sale of your book, which seems pretty fair to me. Um, and they've got a whole interface for making that super easy. They don't give you a lot of control over like the fonts and stuff, so it's, it's kind of a trade-off there. Um, in fact, I don't know if they, they give you any control over, over the fonts, but as far as, if you, as, far as you know, having to click a button instead of write a script to generate the book, they're the ones to go with. And they also have this really interesting where if you've got a following and they're, they're kind of interested in what you have to say, you can actually make a sale to people that know that you're writing this book. And as you update it, they will get the, the updates for free. And uh, time. yeah, well, not a, you wouldn't you, you you would just once you publish a new chapter, they would just get it, right? So 
you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't make another sale. They would just get you know they would just get an update to the book. And then uh, lastly, Gumroad. Oh, and yeah, and these ones do do allow you to sell the files that they generate on other places. And then uh, Gumroad is if you're if you're a web web person, and you're going to set up your own website. These are the guys. Um, these are the guys that to go with because they only take five percent plus twenty five cent uh, charge. Um, they do all the credit card processing and they'll host your files and make sure that they get delivered to your your customers. Um, it's a super super breezy if you if you kind of know what you're doing as far as building websites. Then these are the these are way to go and it's really really easy to integrate. It's just a little JavaScript to include and um, they take whatever file you know if you want to sell a movie file if you want to. You know, include audio interviews. You say you interviewed an expert in the the domain you're writing a book about, uh, and you want to include that as part of like a bigger multimedia package. They'll just they'll create the bundle. You know, you can create a bundle and sell whatever you have. And so, um, we'll stop there. I had a had a couple more slides just about marketing, but I think we probably need to get going. So, yes. So there, there are, I only had two more slides, so we're we're pretty much there.